Hello everybody and welcome to Merlin Reviews. And today I'm going to be discussing a film I saw the previous night with a friend of mine. I saw Elysium last night and I have to say I really enjoyed this movie. Now, I will admit that I was not incredibly excited to see it. I kind of felt that it was going to be a decent film. And that's mostly because I really enjoyed Neil Blomkamp's first movie, District 9, which came out back in 2009. I thought that film was fantastic. Uh, I know some people didn't like it, but overall it got good reviews, and I really enjoyed it. And this film definitely feels like it has some of those attributes. You can really feel his style just in where the film is shot and, and the kind of grainy yet incredibly sophisticated camera work that goes into the film that makes everything seem very fluid yet also kind of dirty. It's a very unique style of cinematography that I just think is really, really cool, actually. It, you can really feel the director's personality in this film. Though I wasn't really incredibly excited to see it, I did feel that after having watched it, I really feel like it exceeded my expectations. I really enjoyed it. Now, I'm going to get a little bit into the plot. Basically, it's a sci-fi action movie, and it stars Matt Damon and Jodie Foster. They're probably the, they're the biggest billed actors in the movie. Though William Fitchner and the guy from District 9 uh, was also in it. So there are some pretty decent actors in here. I honestly think this was one of Matt Damon's best performances. I will admit that was definitely helped by the cinematography and the soundtrack and just the effects work and everything went in. Like, the presentation of this film was excellent. But the plot of the film is a pretty basic sci-fi kind of story that we have seen before. Basically, it takes place in the far future. Mankind has become overpopulated. And there was a lot of disease, a lot of crime running rampant everywhere. So basically, the majority of the population lives on Earth in really bad conditions. It looks like the entire, <laughs> it looks like the entire planet has basically become District Nine. Uh, just <laughs> basically, like uh, the whole the whole world has become one third world country, and the government and the corporations run everything from afar. And basically, while all the poor people, all the working class people, live on Earth, just kind of struggling with all the crime and disease and overpopulation. The small percentage of wealthy people live up on Elysium, which is this giant, sophisticated space station that hovers in orbit around Earth. And on Elysium, which is a major plot point, it's basically like living at a really, really expensive resort with all your needs taken care of. It's complete luxury. And most importantly, the citizens of Elysium have at their dispense all this really great technology that can basically cure pretty much any disease. So... The people that live up on Elysium are disease-free, deficiency-free, and more or less immortal. So it's basically paradise on Earth, except not really on Earth. Matt Damon's character is a young man who has basically been struggling his whole life to get up to Elysium. He's a working-class guy. He was born, we believe he was an orphan, we're not really sure, but we know that he was raised in a Catholic school. Over time, even though he is a relatively decent person, the world that he exists in really has just gotten to him, so he kind of falls into this life of crime. And we learn after the fast forward of the film, we find an adult Matt Damon that he's had a heavy criminal history. He was involved with a lot of gangs. He was stealing cars, doing all kinds of things. And now he's finally tried to get his life back together, get on track. He's working at a factory, and he's doing his best. He's struggling. There's a lot of temptation around him to go back to his old ways, but he is trying to make an honest living. So Matt Damon's a pretty nice guy. Though, ultimately, he still has these dreams of going up to Elysium because he made this promise to this young girl that he grew up with who would later sort of become a possible love interest that he had in the past that they would one day get up to Elysium and get away from all the disease and poverty. Now, Matt Damon is, once again, working for this evil corporation because, of course, the evil corporations are in cahoots with the government and run everything. And Matt Damon is just a dock worker. He works in, in the factory, on the line, helping to build the robots that basically serve everybody. Apparently the entire world is basically run by those who control all these robots. The robots are the primary military, medical, and just public service force that exists on the planet. So it's kind of ironic that the robots that often oppress people, including Matt Damon's character Max, he is in fact helping to make. He goes into work one day after having a, a bad day at work, finding out that his parole has gotten extended because of misunderstanding with the robot. He gets his arm broken, he goes into work, and there is a room where... The robots apparently have to be coated in some radiation for some unknown reason. I'm not entirely sure why. It's, apparently it's a power source. But there's a jam in the door. And his boss tells him that if he does not go inside and try to 
fix the jam, he's going to lose the job. And as was stated earlier, he's really lucky to have the job that he has. So Max is basically forced into this position where he has to go into the room and try to release the jam, or he'll find himself without a job and probably just going back to the whole lifestyle that he was trying to avoid in the first place. So he goes in there, and of course, the door goes shut, and the radiation floods in, and he is exposed to an incredibly lethal dose of radiation. It really demonstrates how little people care about humanity and just the safety of their workers because the CEO of the company is actually down there paying a visit to the planet and he goes and talks to the manager and he's like, why has production stopped? And he tries to explain to him that Max has been exposed to radiation and Wolf Hedger's like, just get him out of here. Get, like, don't hold up the line. You know? So basically he cares more about production than he does about human life. It's just a little example about the difference between the people of Elysium and the people that still live on Earth. It really creates a huge dichotomy between the two. But what, what, that comes to one of the things I really like about this film is how this really cold society where nobody really cares about anybody and everything has been roboticized and they've taken out the human element because basically no humans are around to talk to him. After barely recovering from all the radiation, a robot comes in, tells him basically what, that he's going to die in five days, gives him some medication and says, thank you for your service. And that's it. So Max goes out of the factory and he realizes he's basically been exposed to all this radiation, his body's going to shut down, he's got five days to live, and the pills are the only thing that's going to keep him functioning until he dies. Now, it turns out one of his old criminal buddies really feels bad for him and says, you know what, I'm going to try and find a way to get you up to Elysium. So he takes him to this local crime lord, who, it turns out, is also kind of a freedom fighter. And the guy says to him, you know, all right, I kind of owe you. We've had our experience in the past. You've got nothing to lose. I have this experiment that I want to do. And so basically, in this world, apparently they have these cyber suits that can enhance your strength and everything else. In this world, apparently they have these cyber suits that can be directly loaded into your nervous system that can enhance your strength, your endurance, everything. They don't make you invulnerable, but they basically make you a super soldier. Think basically like Master Chief, but without the genetist. Think basically like Master Chief from Halo, but without the genetic element. No, he's not quite Robocop, but he's basically Matt Damon from the Bourne Ultimatum, but maybe slightly more badass. But basically, the crime boss says to Matt Damon's character, All right, we're going to have this. This suit is basically to make you stronger. It's going to make you capable of taking on this job before you die. Basically, the only way to get onto Elysium is you have to have, you have basically have to have a barcode stamped on your body to identify you so that you can get into Elysium, become a citizen there, and use all their medical facilities. So the crime boss says, All right, to get into Elysium, we have to go and find a really rich, citizen of Elysium and hijack all their information. That way we'll be able to get in. And Matt Damon says, okay, but it has to be this guy. And he points out the CEO of Armadine, the company that he worked for, who is John Carlyle, who is played by William Fetchner. And he says it has to be him. Basically as a way of getting revenge for him, basically throwing him off the factory without any regard for his life. So he takes on a couple guys. They raid the CEO. Unfortunately, he dies. However, they do manage to download the information into his brain and upload it to Matt Damon. Now, this is where another element comes in. It turns out that up on Elysium, the Secretary of Defense, who's played by Jodie Foster, is really unhappy with the fact that the president of Elysium doesn't seem to be taking a lot of precautions for security and defending against all the refugees from Earth that try to get up to Elysium. So she hatches this plot with the CEO of Armadine to basically reroute all the codes of Elysium so that she or somebody that who she chooses can be made the new president, who will be someone she'll be easier to control because the administration isn't very happy with the way she's been running things. She's something of a radical. Not saying that the people of Elysium are necessarily better than she is, but they do believe that she's kind of a loose cannon. So Jodie Foster hatches this plot to rewrite the entire code of Elysium so that she can recreate the government from ground up. And apparently Armadine helped create Elysium because they have all this really, really secretive information. But as we said before, the corporations are pretty much in league with the government and really control everything anyway, so it kind of is an interesting commentary on modern issues, and it sort of makes sense. Anyway, the CEO of Armadine, John Carlyle, uploads this information into his brain. So when he is killed and the information is transferred to Matt Damon, Matt Damon essentially holds the keys to the kingdom, and anybody that can get a hold of this computer program can basically rewrite the entire code, rewrite the entire government and structure of Elysium, and theoretically, everybody on Earth could technically be made a citizen of Elysium and receive all the medical and other benefits that they could provide. It could essentially change the entire way of life for the way things have been going, and really break down that huge class barrier. Of course, this makes him a huge target, and Jodie Foster's character is basically like, alright, we can't let him get out, so 
we have to track this guy down, we have to get his brain, get the code so that I can continue on with my plan. So she hires this black ops agent who's completely insane. He's played by Chartel Copley, who was the main character of District 9. And this guy really puts on a great performance as a villain. He's a psychotic bastard. He basically roams around on Earth and his entire purpose is to take out anybody that tries to get onto Elysium. He's like their last line of defense, but he's completely psychopathic. In fact, he was recently kicked out of the government because of his incredibly volatile methods. This guy would serve as the primary antagonist of the film, and his name would be Kruger. No, not that Kruger. And he would basically hunt down Matt Damon. Matt Damon's friends get killed by Kruger and his team, and he ends up hiding with his old fling and her daughter, who apparently has leukemia. Now, somehow getting mixed up with all this, Kruger tracks down where Matt Damon was, captures his love interest and her daughter, and basically is attempting to use them as leverage. Now, Matt Damon goes to the crime lord, whose name was Spider, and basically says, all right, well, get this out of me so I can get my ticket up to Elysium, blah, blah, blah. However, they find out the information's been scrambled and it will take about five days. And obviously, Matt Damon doesn't have five days, so he says, you know what? They have what I want. I'm just going to use this to buy my way up to Elysium. I don't want to die, blah, blah, blah. So we get to see that Matt Damon's character is not really a huge hero throughout. He's a nice guy, but he really is looking out for him. In D&D, we would call that basically neutral. So Max turns himself into Kruger, along with the mother and the daughter, and they go up to Elysium. However, there is kind of a quick turn of events in which Kruger decides he wants to take the information in Matt Damon's head for himself so he can control Elysium. So they crash onto Elysium, and from that point on in the movie, it's a chase to get Matt Damon to upload the information so that basically everybody on Earth can be free. And I'm not going to spoil the ending because if you want to see the film, uh, I definitely say you should see it. I highly recommend it. So I'm not going to give away the last 15-20 minutes of the movie. As I said before, I really, really enjoyed this film. I think, I will admit, uh, there are some issues that I found in the writing. There are a couple things. Like, for instance, Spider, the crime lord, when, he, when they get onto Elysium, I feel like he probably had the most plot-convenient laptop of all time. Like, basically, he would hook up. I mean, okay, I know it's science fiction, the guy's a genius, whatever. But pretty much any time he hooks up his cord to a door, he can open and close any door and rewrite anything once he gets up there, even though he's never been up there before. Like, they never really explain how he got all this information in tech about Elysium. He's a criminal, so I could kind of let it go, but, but I thought that was a little bit convenient to have that ridiculous laptop that could open and close any door at will. I also thought that Jodie Foster's character, even though she was an interesting character and she gave a pretty decent performance, uh, she was a good villain, it seemed like they really were going to explore her character a little more to make her a little more three-dimensional but I'm not gonna spoil anything that doesn't really happen because of something that later occurs in the film so I felt like it seemed as if there was definitely potential and there was someone that wanted to write a little more about her and how things specifically were on Elysium to kind of show the differences between Earth and the people that live on the station but that isn't really explored we spend most of the time on Earth seeing how bad it is down there and we just kind of get this vague view of what it's like on Elysium Though that's kind of understandable, considering Elysium is supposed to be this kind of mysterious place that really seems great, but it really isn't. So I can kind of understand from a thematic standpoint what they were doing there. There's also this whole idea about destiny, which is kind of, sort of heavy-handed, but not really explored upon. It was it was kind of borderline cheesy that uh, Matt Damon's character is supposed to be the savior of mankind. I, I kind of thought that wasn't necessary, but it, it worked. It worked. The film did explore themes about immigration, healthcare, and other, like, class issues that I think were kind of supposed to mirror things that are going on in modern times, but uh, I don't know if any of them were explored incredibly well. Uh, one thing I will say is that even though the plot of this film was fairly simple, it did work. I mean, there were plenty of, there were plenty of aspects of the story that we've seen before in science fiction, we've seen before in action movies. You could see inspiration from the Star Trek episode, The Cloud Minders. It's basically the same concept. In terms of the basic idea and the general plot of just the guy getting really sick and having to get up there, it still tried to have as much commentary as District 9 did on certain issues. In terms of the thematic exploration, as well as the overall story and character development, there really simply is not as much there as there was in District 9. So, I can't help but compare the two films because these are the only two films the director's done thus far. So, would I say it's as good as District 9? Uh, in terms of originality, no. Uh, but I do think, I do think that this film feels a little more fluid in terms of what it did. Like, it's a more solid film. District 9 kind of jumped around in its tone. Like, it did four or five different things in one film. This film feels like a more solid action movie. 
Is it as experimental and as interesting as District 9? No. However, it still has Neil Blomkamp's incredible direction. These actors really turned out great performances. I think that was one of the great strengths, that Matt Damon, Jodie Foster, and everybody else in this film was really perfectly cast. There was not a bad actor in this film. They all did a really good job. Another thing I have to say, the effects work. One of the great things about Neil Blomkamp, once, I, once again, he has this unique visual technique that I can't really describe. He's kind of... I don't know if there's really a word for it, because if you combine cyberpunk and garbage dump, it would basically be Neil Blomkamp's visual direction, because that's the only way I can describe it. Everything looks incredibly high-tech, but also really junky, and I really like that. His, his props and his effects look really good. My friend and I were discussing how the CGI was really good in this film, and it was done... I don't know whether the CGI was done to look like the props, or the props were done to look like the CGI, but... You could not tell what was what. You really couldn't. So the costume design, the effects work really good. And some of the deaths in this film were really good. What when it comes to the, the violence, there was some there were some seriously violent moments. Like there is one point where I'm not gonna say who, but a villain gets part, like the entire front of their head blown off and it looks really, really good. Um also, once again the camera work was, was really amazing. Cinematography in this film was just great. Like, really great establishing shots, really great sweeping shots from the sky. Just just really capturing the atmosphere of this film was great. And, of course, the music was really awesome as well. Like, it's one of those things where, once again, I feel, while the plot in and of itself isn't bad, it's not really anything special, the execution of this film, very much like District 9, is what's going to make it really stand out. I also have to say, the villain in this film was great. Like, he was just a completely nutty bastard. And I feel, while I will say the character's... With the exception of maybe the main character, I would say everybody was kind of two-dimensional. Like they were, they were more caricatures. They had, they had their personalities. They stood out, but they weren't really explored in any real detail. However, they did their part, and I, I do like the character's journey. I did like the journey in which Matt Damon's character Max went through. I really liked the fact that they showed that he wasn't, even though they had this whole background concept of destiny, and everybody's born to do something great, and he would save everybody. He didn't start out that way. He kind of was just a normal guy trying to look out for himself and just sort of ended up doing the right thing because he believed it was the right thing to do. Like, that's why I say I think Matt Damon really got a great performance. Is this a film that is going to be talked about and remembered for years to come? I don't know if I'd really say that. It's definitely a good film. Um, and once again, I would say it's not quite at the level of District 9, but it's definitely one that I would watch again. One that I'm probably going to buy, and I will say it's, it's personally one of my favorite sci-fi movies of recent years. And I really think sci-fi has really been making a big comeback, and I'm, I'm really happy to say that. So, on the whole, I would give Elysium, I would give Elysium probably a 4 out of 5 stars, a B-plus rating. I think it was very good, uh, really enjoyable. If you like science fiction, if you like action movies, if you like something unique, and heck, if you just like Matt Damon in an action movie... You're probably going to enjoy this film, at least for one good watch. It was entertaining, it was cool, and that's all I really have to say about it. Alright guys, Merlin out.